Okay, you're welcome, Max. So, style meets substance was very much the theme today as Littlewoods Ireland launched the Camogie Leagues this afternoon. Littlewoods Ireland, as you may well know, and the Camogie Association were today joined by 2019 All-Ireland winner Heather Cooney from Galway and Kilkenny's Katie Power to launch the 2020 Littlewoods Ireland Camogie Leagues. And I'm very happy to say that Katie and Heather are in studio. You're both very welcome. Thanks for coming in. Uh, familiar foes on the pitch. I read from the 2018 All-Ireland semi-final report, the battle between Katie Power and Heather Cooney was the highlight of the opening half, no less. And here you are, Great. forced to be together for the day. So who's the better sledger is the key question we want to know. The back, obviously. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, do you guys tend to match up when Kilkenny play Galway? Generally, yeah. We always, Generally? Yeah. yeah. OK. Um, the change in the All-Ireland last year, though. Yeah. Was, oh. I was nearly running into my position. I was like, where? <laughs> good to catch up. <laughs> Just um, we had an injury and we switched around things and yeah. whatnot. And okay. Yeah, but we'd be, generally. be fairly familiar on the field, yeah. <laughs> and so, well, I mean, look, I mean, you, you don't have to give away the ins and outs of it, but uh, how do you find going up against each other? What's that like? Do you shake hands and say, how are you, as you've got to know each other over the years? Or is it a little bit... Really. Daggers. Just okay, so daggers from Katie. Kind of. Daggers from Katie. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird. Like I think we only got to know each other at the trip in New York, really. Yeah, yeah. No like, stars. Yeah, and we would have never even chatted. chatted much, really. No, no, no. Right. We would have never really I... crossed paths. Sure, like you were just hurling against each other. But like the trip was class. Then you'd be chatting away to mm. people. You wouldn't even, you know, you wouldn't know what they're like at all outside the field. You know, yeah. you're nearly hating her because she's marking you every day, <laughs> and I'm sure it's the other way around, like. That's it, you kind of just get on with it. You yeah. come to the pitch and you shake hands and you do whatever you got to do and then shake hands afterwards and That's see it. you soon. Yeah. <laughs> Usually. So there, there was never much after in terms of staying for a chat. You're one, someone's lost and doesn't really want, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was the All-Star trip just gone, November. Yeah. Mm, yeah. What was that like? New York, was it? Yeah, I was too good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was brilliant. And it was brilliant for Camogie because people were still talking about Camogie in November, whereas, you know, like, the All-Ireland was over September and, like, it was talked about in a positive manner this year, which was great. Mm -hmm. Obviously, not so much for ourselves, but as a whole for Camogie. But, like, still in November, people were still chatting about it because of the trip. And, you know, it was it was unreal for the people that got to go. Like, it was, was once it in a lifetime. 2018 All-Stars against 2019 yeah, All-Stars? that was it. So did you two have to mark each other again? <laughs> were we, actually? No, 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 no I didn't. No, no, no. <laughs> I got a break in the fruit of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I know it was. It was great, though, to get to know, like you said, the girls outside of the Camogie pitch because yeah. like that you on a day you go up you shake hands you get along with it small bit of chat maybe and and that's it but I felt you really got to know yeah it was cool you really got to know the other girls and it was just it was a lovely experience yeah okay I'm sure it was so the 2020 season gets underway there are two double headers so I see Porky Cueve and the Gaelic Grounds that people are going along anyway so Cork take on Waterford on the Saturday ahead of the Cork Hurlers against Tipperary and then Limerick play Tip on the Sunday ahead of Limerick Hurlers against Galway is this something you guys are a fan of? The double headers? Do you think it makes sense? Do you like it? You don't have, you don't feel any sense of, hang on, why are we opening up for the men? I know some players have said that. No, Personally, I I'd see so. it as more well, eyeballs. I think it's brilliant. I think it's good yeah. too. I yeah. think it gives people an opportunity to watch the game that mightn't be necessarily at a game, otherwise it's called be realistic. Um, yeah. And it gives them a chance to get an idea of what the game is about, kind of follow a team a little bit more. Yeah. You know, Showcase the game. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And I think that's what... Well, I find people are saying anyway. They're they're seeing that a little yeah. bit more, and they're they're interested. They're they'd be willing to go to another match. Mm. Um, it's just giving the people the opportunity to kind of to clasp onto a team and start following a team. Um, I think when people follow teams, it's one thing to say, okay, well done. I hear you're in a semi final or great, you're in a final or whatever. Mm. But they don't get the chance to follow a team. Whereas the more they see them, yeah. you're 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 part of it. You kind of feel like. An emotional attachment yeah, almost. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sure. So I think that it and lends to that. A nice experience to play under lights as well, like the Saturday game, there's something just kind of cool about that. Yeah, that's deadly. I think is the match, the Cork and Waterford match Saturday, is it under lights, no? Yes, Cork yeah, Waterford on the, on the Saturday. And then Cork play tip in the hurling afterwards. There'll be a big crowd at that, yeah, great definitely. atmosphere. Yeah. yeah, and like I think is the Cork ladies, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know if they've ever even got to play in the new Parky Cueve either, so right. it'll be... That's another groundbreaking thing, like for Camogie and for Cork. But as Heather said, like the more people that we get to play in front of, we're delighted. You know, we don't want to play in front of a couple of hundred. Like you know, it's in front of the lads' games. Obviously, there's thousands there, so yeah. it's it's exposure. It's yeah, it more is. people seeing. Oh, this game actually has something to offer here. It's mm. the more games that are seen and the more games that are available, the better. 
And in terms of like the rhythms of getting back into things, when did you guys get back training and get back moving again? Well, I suppose we've Still on detox after the <laughs> All Stars trip, probably. It was a, <laughs> was a few <laughs> weeks. A good winter. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I suppose we, well, we've been tipping away in the gym anyway for a while and back on the pitch training then since after Christmas, I suppose, in the new year, early in the okay. new year. So, yeah, kind of looking forward to a few games now at this stage. Yeah. What about you guys? Same as ourselves, yeah. Um, gym sessions, not collectively before Christmas, just yeah. try to get it in yourself so it doesn't feel like a drag yeah. nearly. And yeah. then after Christmas, then obviously back collectively on the pitch as well as the gym. So as Heather said, I think people are a good month of that now. We'll be looking forward to a few mm, matches. Yeah. So. I presume it's, it, it's the same really right across the GA landscape, but certainly you looked at Dublin Kerry in the football the other evening and the fitness levels for January are you know, incredible. Someone like Brian Fenton, there's not a pick in them. These no. guys are coming back fit. Are those, is that, that wasn't always the case. Is that increasingly the case in Camogie? The fitness standards are going through the roof and proven in that respect all the time? But I think you're always kind of keeping an eye on yourself anyway. Yeah. You never let yourself go too far because you know the, the slog that you'd have to go through to get back again. So even throughout the winter months, um, I'd say most of us yeah. are kind of Like you enjoy the bit of downtime. Yeah. yeah. And it's nice like not having to go training collectively. It's not, it doesn't feel like a drag, whereas you can go and to fit your you. own day. Yeah, so like it doesn't feel like you're actually training. Mm -hmm. So it's good, yeah. Like I think everyone in this day and age that plays intercounty minds themselves. They don't come back yes. heavy or unfit anymore because that's it. Yeah. Like imagine facing into January and that it's just not worth it. And I think it's the lifestyle you get used to as well. Yeah, you're it just is. generally living a healthy life. I suppose you're yeah. eating that bit better and yeah. whatnot. But you'd miss the exercise. You yeah. nearly would. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like a weekend of it now. You'd be looking forward to. Geez, I can't wait to get back to the week now and get a few gyms in and mm. get back eating normal again. <laughs> Feeling normal, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> yeah. it. I'm going to ring up the All Ireland final if that's okay. Okay. So, I mean, as you say, it was a really good game. It finished Galway 3 14, Kilkenny 17 points. This is back September 8th. So, this was Galway's first All Ireland since 2013. Just third ever. Uh, yeah, just third whenever, yeah. And for Kilkenny, as I'm sure people know, there have been plenty of All Ireland finals of late. So, three All Ireland final defeats in a row. Uh, that's a sickener. I presume, full time whistle, Katie, you're thinking. How are we here again? Yeah, kind of. That's the feeling. You're just like, why? Like, why do we do this? Like, you know? <laughs> but, like, I have no quims on the day. Like, the better team usually wins, and they were the better team by miles that day. Do you know? Um, we did come back a good bit in the second half and got close-ish. Got back to within two points. Mm. Yeah, so, like, we were we were clawing it, but it was, it was so hard. Like, we fought so hard to get back that lead. And then I think it was Neve Kilkenny popped up with, like, two super points. She was amazing that day. So, like, <laughs> yeah. like, kind of just when those went over, you're just like, this is kind of it Yeah, now. like, three first-half goals is sucker punch. And I think there were two, I think it was one in 26 minutes, one in 28 yeah. minutes. The two so, that came together yeah. was probably... You know, we recovered well from the first goal. I think we went ahead we after yeah. that. Um, but the two together just before half time, that really uh, knocked the sail, yeah. the wind out of the sails, really did. Like, probably looking back, it was the turning point. Those two minutes was massive for Galway to win and for obviously for ourselves. You know, we just didn't seem to quite recover from that. Yeah, it's very hard to. Because Anne Danny was on uh, the show last week, actually, now with Bally Ragged, but she was saying after the game, three goals killed us. Uh, and she was frustrated because they came from puck outs. Just the last, the two, anyway, landing down in our centre back, their yeah. centre field just came on to breaking ball from that overlap. We didn't contain it. So, even from your point of view, to concede two goals from puck outs. Yeah, that was it. And we were kind of, we were aware of what was coming. You know, we had obviously gone through Sierra's puck outs down the middle, but like Neve and was just on the brace. Like she was unreal, like she was picking him up. There was, there was no stopping her and wherever the ball was, it was landing to her in fairness. Like, so she broke through. I don't know if she, she could have broke through for the two goals. She definitely was overlap anyway for mm. two out of the three. So those puck outs and the breaks off the puck outs just absolutely murdered us, yeah. Yeah, a happier story for you guys. Definitely, yeah. Um, I suppose like that, we'd won the final in 2013, but I got there again in 2015, lost out. So getting there again now this year, we really felt like, OK, we need to make it happen and no more sob stories. It's just go out and make it happen. And like you were saying, the girls are in the middle of the field. Like when you need leaders like the likes of Neve, um, Eva D, so many people, Ailish, just stood up and when they needed to, mm. I suppose, get scored on the board, they did. So, yeah, no, yeah. hopefully. Uh, like, Katie, when you lose three in a row, do you, are you inclined to think, so? oh, I can't even think about 2020 for a long time or does it almost 
drive you on, I want to get back going the next day. I guess you, you can react in both ways. Yeah, you can. Um, we were lucky enough in, like, personally, uh, we had club game the next weekend. Okay. So, obviously, you're down the dumps Monday and maybe Tuesday, but then you just go back to club train Wednesday, and we had a fair old shot with the club, so I had something in my own head that, like, I was so positive about and looking mm. forward to. Uh, played every single weekend until we lost the county final at the end of October. So I think when I lost the county final, lost by a point, last minute goal. A bit of a pattern emerging here. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. So like when that happened then, I, I don't know if it all just came together or what, you'd be just wondering like where do you go from here really? Like and uh, the trip came at a good time. You know, we were going then a few weeks after I had an, my own holiday booked with my family like in December. So it's just nice to chill, forget about Camogie for what, six weeks. Mm. And then, you know, it's, e it's either, I suppose, give up or stay going. Mm. And, you know, we're young, we're fit, we're healthy. Why not stay going and see what 2020 brings? Hopefully, mm. hopefully something better. But you, you'd never know either, like, you know. Heather, for you, it's not just the All Ireland, it's also a league win and it's an All Star. So, where were you at the start of 2019? Were you feeling good? Did you feel you were heading in for a big year? Um, start of 2019, you start off like any other year, I suppose. Um, we had had uh, new management put in the, f the year before, so I suppose we had a, a solid grounding and we knew where we were going and mm. we had a base to start on anyway. Um, but you go into every year the same as any other year. You just take it every every week at a time, every match at a time, and, and that's what we did. And. Yeah, thankfully, um, it ended up being definitely a year to remember. Won't be forgetting 2019 too easily. But um, I suppose we're back in the start of 2020 now again, and we we'll start off exactly like we did last sure. year. Just you take it week by week, training by training, and was there out. was there a point in 2019? Maybe it's winning the league. Maybe it's later in the summer where even privately you thought to yourself, okay, I'm not going to jinx it by saying it out loud, but something feels like it's clicking here. We're we're moving really well. This is going. You know, we're taking along quite nicely, and maybe this could be our year. Did that moment arrive um, early or late? I don't know. You'd ever, I don't think I'd ever say this could be our year. Or you know, things feel good and things are going well in the camp, and and you're feeling good at matches, and you're you're kind of pushing forward, and you're taking steps every day. And yeah, there was just a good feeling, and I think with that good feeling, every day you move forward. There's a sense of confidence, sense mm. of belief, and. Like that, we came up um, in a quarter final then against Waterford, and we were just blown away. They absolutely knocked us back, um, start that match, and they gave us one hell of a game that day. And I think that actually, that seriously woke us up. And I suppose we got over that game. That was a seriously tough game, and you kind of think, okay, we got past that tough mm. battle onto the next one. And that was Cork, um, big game in in Limerick, and. Like that in previous years, I suppose, when it comes to games like that, there's always going to be a, a point in the game where it's mm. touch or go. You, there's, games like that are always tight. So in previous years, I suppose, if the other team had gotten on top, we would have faltered and heads go down, I think. Whereas this year, we kind of just said, no, do you know what, now we'll keep battling and battling and battling and kept the heads there. And I think that inner confidence, I suppose, in ourselves, knowing we'd loads of work done, we kind of felt like, do you know what, now we can do this. And mm. that sense of belief just kind of literally got us over the line and then onto the final. Uh, the final was a great game. I know you mentioned that at the outset, Katie. I'm sure that's not a massive consolation now, but often the, in recent times, the ladies' football matches have been brilliant advertisements and great occasions, hampered by the weather quite a lot this year. And then the Camogie was a great, more open game. And it also seems, and, and I'm kind of segueing into the trials for the league this year, seems like the referee let a bit more go less whistle happy yeah. there's a bit more flow to that game definitely i think even throughout the championship it was a lot more free flowing like i remember we played galway the first round of the championship mm. and it was like we went away from that match and was like, that was the most physical game we've got to play in years and like we were sore and broke up after that for a few days because there were, even at the start of the match there was a few things that happened and i was like normally that you'd be nearly looking to the ref because years previous they would have been blown like either way um, so I think throughout the championship, mm. it was definitely without the rules being changed, the refs were definitely leaving a lot more go, and it was free flowing. There was people complimenting all the games they were going to. There was never really negativity towards the games, mm. thankfully. And you know, it was no longer nearly a free taking contest anymore. People were actually allowed to express themselves, okay. which was great. So there's a list of rules to be trialled. Some of them will be more significant than others. Uh, players will no longer be able to score a goal by hand-passing the slitter into the net. They can still go score a point that way. 
A uh, player will now have the option to take a free from their hand if they're fouled inside their own 45 metre line. And then I guess the one we're alluding to is rule five. A player may now use minimal contact. Mm -hmm. Define that. Player may now use minimal contact on an opponent's body from side on once they're making a reasonable effort. Reasonable effort. This is beautifully open. I love it. Agree, kind of a. Yeah, took her head off. I made a reasonable effort, yeah. uh, making a reasonable effort to gain possession of the ball. So minimal contact and reasonable effort. Basically, Katie, you can do whatever the hell yeah. you want. Sledge then. It's open then. season. Uh, um, so was was there a? It, it sounds like it based on the season just gone and, and that softening of the physicality stakes or what what was and wasn't allowed. Was there a sense the game needed to move this way? Definitely, I think. Yeah. yeah. There was an outcry the last couple of years, really more so from the players and anyone that was coming to see the games. I think the two game, the two All Irelands with ourselves in Cork, like after those games, it was worrying the negativity towards the game itself because there was nobody talking good about the game. Everyone was criticizing the refs, the players, the rules, the association, and like. the uh, the camogie itself, like we weren't going to grow. Like so, mm. thankfully we're being listened to um, and it's it's great like hopefully 2020 will be a bumper year for Kamogi and you know we're all as header like as we both alluded to you know everyone keeps themselves taken over all of us are extremely fit like we're athletes we're strong we train to be strong and fit mm. so at least now we're going to be allowed to show that on the field which will be hopefully great for everyone yeah because I know even in the ladies football final one of the complaints from both sides afterwards was it's a wet day if we can't barge our way through a bit more, it's going to destroy the spectacle. Yeah. That was, you know, their point. You agree? You're happy to see this come in and needed to come in? Well, the type of game that it is, there's inevitably going to be contact. So calling it a non-contact yeah. sport, it's it's not really... Um, the bygone era, really. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it's not, we're not talking about crazy tackles here or anything. We're just talking about letting the game flow, like being able to break out through a tackle and continue the game up the field instead of making the effort to go and it being called back and it's da ball down, Stop everyone start. moving off. Yeah, exactly. It's just going to let the game flow. And as Katie was saying, I don't think anyone's was complaining about players or spectators alike mm. about the game being let flow. And I think the rule is kind of just putting in writing what was kind of happening yeah. anyway, a little Did bit more. Did you notice the change this year? I think I kind of felt like it was improving a little bit more. I do remember matches gone by and You'd wonder how much playing time was actually yeah. let flow right. because it felt so stop starty. So, you know, I definitely think it's just it's putting down a paper what has been happening possibly of recent. Yeah. But um, again, it's still quite a grey area. It's left to the discretion of the referee, like you said, yes. reasonable effort yeah. and uh, <laughs> and whatnot. So it'll be interesting to see um, how it's ref. So great. Okay. Well, they're going to be trials, so I presume they'll be rubber stamped and. Surely, yeah. Hopefully, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless something really goes badly wrong. Yeah. yeah. So, 2020, you guys will both be big contenders again. How do you see the landscape ahead of this year? It's tough, like, to call, especially the league. I think, let's say, there's been a so called top three ourselves, Galway and Cork. Mm. So, like, Tip have been in the semi final over the last two years as well. So, they'll probably be considered in the top four. But, like, Waterford pushed Galway so far. I think last year they were really unlucky in the league. Like they were super competitive. Like pushed everyone to the pin of their collar and might have lost out by like a point in each game. Yeah. Um, so they didn't qualify. But I I think that they could be really strong yeah. contenders this year. Closer than I they agree. might look. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. And especially in the league, I think they do have an awful lot done even before Christmas. So I think they will be a lot. They will be further ahead of people. Um, than other teams in the league, so I can see them making a really big push this year, as well as Tip and let's say ourselves, Galway and Cork as well. Mm. What's your feeling on it all, Heather? Yeah, I was thinking the same about Waterford. I really think they've kind of come a good bit over the last couple of years. They've got some serious players, and like that they showed last year, they they really they showed us what they can do, and I definitely think they're going to build on that now and and push forward. And like you said, with the likes of Tip, they've been there thereabouts, yeah. um, and yeah, no. Um, I think it'll prove for an interesting league. Yeah. Um, there are more and more teams coming to the fore. Uh, one last thing I just wanted to get your, your thoughts on, or your, your um, well, I guess your experience on. I saw of the All Ireland final, the point was made, yes, the ref let it flow, but it was also quite open. There were no sweepers, was something I saw yeah. in a few different reports. So the game tactically, where is it going in that respect? Obviously, people would know from watching the hurling, the sweepers debate has been non stop for a number of years now. Where's Camogie tactically? 
I suppose sometimes there is a, a sweeper yeah. put into play and whatever team forces you the sweeper on you, 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 you have to play that system then as well. Um, yeah. I suppose you work with it as best you can. I do think um, the All-Ireland final was quite an open game. It definitely flowed, the ball was up and down the field and it was, it was quick, it was up mm. and down. Um, Had you planned for it to be that way in advance, or did the game just take on a life of its own? Well, in any time we play each other, it is like that, though. And really, yeah, like there's yeah. never it's more traditional style. Yeah, almost, it's, yeah, it's not really compact. There's never really a, a sweeper any time we play each other. Really, so mm. it was probably going to end up like that anyway. Mm. Both teams kind of like to attack. Yeah, and then just whatever happens nearly <laughs> after that, yeah. hope for the best at the back. Absolute know, battle. But, yeah, 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 but we would be more traditional, I suppose. Okay. Um, and as Heather said, like it, it depends on obviously the teams that you'd be playing. There is sweepers, obviously, in some different circumstances in different games. But mm. it'll be forced upon you. Yeah, you? exactly. Forces your hand on. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are now heading off in different directions, and the next time you see each other, it'll be on a pitch, and there'll be a grimace and a firm handshake, and not much said. Great oh. stuff. Well, very best of luck with the season ahead. Congrats again on last year. Thanks, um, The guys were here again, we should say, with thanks to Woods Ireland, who are sponsoring the Camogie Leeds. They're launching today. They get underway uh, this weekend, so get along and see those games. And uh, we might check in at some stage across the year with Katie Power and Heather Cooney. Thanks a million. Thank you. Thank you.